My name is David Gear, and we are going to talk about geography, particularly geography skills. Geography is the science that studies the spatial relationships of things on Earth and these days as well on neighboring planets and even beyond perhaps. By spatial relationships we mean where things are in relation to each other and as such geography uses maps. And over here we have a variety of sources of maps. We have atlases, um, here's a two road, road atlases and specialist maps like the one in 50,000 maps that you will be using for your matric studies and so on. So let's just have a look at some of the kinds, different kinds of maps that we have and we're going to start off by looking at the World Atlas because the World Atlas of course has a great variety of maps and so we get, can get a very good idea. If we look at the cover of the atlas, you'll see there a picture of the Earth. Now, is this a map? Well, strictly speaking, yes, in that it's on a flat surface, but also perhaps not quite, because it's actually a picture of a sphere, a model of the Earth. So what is a map? A map is a depiction or representation of all or part of the Earth's surface on a flat piece of paper. So here we have a picture of a round globe. So that's not really a true map, but nevertheless, it gives us an idea. Here we have a world map. And you will notice some interesting things about the world map. That if you look here, you will see that Africa might appear to be stretched a bit compared to the Africa on the cover. Um, where it's squashed up. And if we look at the shape of Greenland over here and the Arctic Sea, you see we can't, can't see the ice cap on the map over here. It's not shown at all. And there's Greenland and you see Africa is a different shape. So when we draw maps, we have a particular problem. We can't keep the shape and the area and the direction all correct on a flat piece of paper because we're changing from a round earth, a spherical earth, to a flat piece of paper. So we can either have direction and shape, or shape and area, or direction and area. We can't have all three correct at the same time. So what we do is we play some mathematical tricks and we produce what are called map projections. And these allow us to manipulate the spherical Earth and show it on flat pieces of paper. And there are many different kinds of map projections, and we'll look at those a little bit later. But for the moment, we're just going to page through the atlas and get an idea of some of the different kinds of maps. Here again is a picture rather than a true map. As we page through and we start to get into the way the atlas shows various things. Here is a map of the oceans, and notice it leaves out the Arctic and the Antarctic, again because of this great problem of trying to show a spherical Earth on a flat piece of paper. Um, the shapes seem to be more or less right, but notice direction is different. So north is that way there and that way there. And the areas are perhaps about right. And we can always test the area if you look at Greenland compared to Africa. Greenland is about a tenth the size of Africa, so that looks about right, that the area is correct. The shape is more or less correct, although it is a bit twisted in the case of South America and Africa there. Um, and direction is not correct. It's not the same throughout the whole map. And there are many different kinds of map. Here is a map of the world's ocean currents and winds. Here are the vegetation areas of the map of the world. Population density. And notice we often supplement maps with little graphs and other information and photographs. Um, this adds to the value of the map. And you'll see here that here's an example of two completely different kinds of map projection. That here we are preserving the shape and the area. Greenland, one-tenth the size of Africa. But have a look at this. Greenland here is suddenly nearly half the size of Africa 
and is almost as big as South America. So that straight away tells us that this is a map where area is not correct, but direction is. In other words, that if we look at this, north-south is the same throughout the map, and east-west is the same throughout the map. Whereas over here, if you look at the line of longitude, it is curved, and so north is changing as we saw on the previous map. So it depends what you're wanting to show. Um, it's quite interesting that the British, in the, in the days of the British Commonwealth, used to like those um, maps that showed the Northern Hemisphere bigger, and there's an example over there. That if we go back here and just have a look at this, see how the Northern Hemisphere particularly is stretched. You don't notice it so much in the Southern Hemisphere because it's mostly ocean there. But in the days of the British Empire, this made Canada huge and um, Australia perhaps bigger relative. So it made the British Empire look much bigger and the British loved to um, colour their maps red. So the British Commonwealth would show huge areas of red as a result of that kind of map projection, although it's obviously the area is incorrect. And then here is what we call a political map, all the countries of the world and so on and so forth. So maps tell us an awful lot about various things. This here is an interesting map. It's showing the topography. So by using colors and shading, shadows of mountains and things, we can get an idea of the physical shape of the land. And so all sorts of ways of showing different information. Here's the cities um, of southern England. London, all the yellow areas are cities, and so it goes. So maps are the lifeblood, if you like, of geography. If you can't put it on a map, then it's not geography. We don't only use maps, of course. We often use other things that help us to interpret maps. So very often we will be drawing graphs and those kind of things, and we will look at graphs separately from maps, but that just gives us some idea of the different kinds of maps. Of course, maps can be simple or very complicated. An ordinary road sign, if you come to a T-junction on a road, um, that is a map. It's a flat depiction of a piece of the Earth's surface, just the intersection of the roads, and it shows you direction. So an ordinary road sign like that, a direction sign on, on the roads, is a form of map. So from very simple to very complicated, we use maps all the time. And in fact, I would go so far to say if you're not a geographer, you're not a proper citizen of the planet.